so good evening everyone i hope you are doing good so for today i'm back with another video concerning the anglo-saxons this chapter is very important for uh, the british civilization because these people um, have influenced great britain today a lot from religion uh, government etc so how did the anglo-saxons arrive to the uh, to the um, to britain right so first who are the anglo-saxons well the anglo-saxons were germanic tribes who used to live in Europe, right? So this is uh, the island, Britain today, and this is, let's say, Europe, right? So the Germanic tribes used to be here, and they invaded Britain later on. But before we start speaking about invasion, etc., we need to speak about the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, I have already done a video about them before. Uh, just a quick review. Before the arrival of the Germanic tribes to uh, England today, the Roman Empire used to be settled here. Before the Roman Empire, there were what we call Celts. So, uh, quick review, um, the Celts uh, were successful farmers, right? So, they used to uh, have or they, they grew a lot of crops and they had a small population. So, they in initiated something that we call um, trade. They started trading between the tribes inside the, the island and uh, sometimes they trade with the other continent which is Europe and in Europe it is believed that there was also Celtic tribes such as the Gauls I have already spoken about the Gauls uh, so they were helping the Gauls at that time they are also believed, believed to be Celtic tribes the Gauls were in war at that time, that's why the Celts were helping them by providing them food supplies. So the Gauls were in war with who? With the Roman Empire. At that time, the Roman Empire did not exist in Britain because it was in war with the Germanic tribes, Gauls, etc. So when the Roman Empire, when the Emperor saw that the Celts are helping uh, other Celts in Europe, he decided to invade Britain, and also Britain at that time was uh, a great food supplier. There, there was great agriculture, uh, great climate, a um, strategic uh, location, etc. So the Roman Empire was very strong. They invaded the um, Great Britain and they pushed the Celts either to the mountainous area here or to Scotland somewhere here or, I or even Ireland. So let's say the Roman Empire settled and uh, during the life of the Roman Empire, which I have already spoken about that, um, you just need to um, seek for my posts or check my YouTube channel. Now, we need to speak about the Germanic tribes, which are the Anglo-Saxons, who came to um, Britain. So the Germanic tribes are the Anglo-Saxons, right? They came to Britain after the fall of the Roman Empire because here in Europe they defeated the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire uh, decided to retreat its soldiers from Britain. Therefore, Britain stood alone with the Celts, the original Celts who took back the island and fought the Romanized Celts, the Celts uh, who were given the Roman citizenship, right? So those Anglo-Saxons saw that, saw that um, the, the, the Celts were struggling here, they decided to invade them. So they invaded them, three tribes invaded. We had the Angles and the Saxons and the third tribe was called the Utes. The Utes are not very important for us because they settled later on mainly in this uh, area here in the south. But the Angles and the Saxons settled mainly here in the middle. Because the, the mountainous area here is not very important because there was no uh, living conditions there. It was very hard to live there. Now, uh, after the arrival of the Germanic tribes or the Anglo-Saxons, they settled in Britain. The Anglo or the Angles and the Saxons unified their, their uh, let's say, um, their um, kingdoms. And they have created seven kingdoms. Uh, I can give you um, a few. For example, um, East Anglia, one of the, the kingdoms, East Anglia, or uh, Sussex, I think it's with double S, um, Wessex. Um, but the most influential kingdom was called Mercia. Well, Mercia was very strong, powerful, and very influential. Why? Because its king 
um, was very strong and also respected among all the other kings. His name is King Ova. So he knew that uh, he was very strong, I was respected by the other kings, therefore he claimed the kingship of the seven kingdoms. He said that I, I am going to represent the seven kingdoms, I am going to be the king of kings. But later on he died and Mercia lost all of its influence. So this is a general um, background about the uh, Anglo-Saxons. Now I'm going to move to society. Well, society uh, mainly consists of um, speaking about uh, how did they live. Um, we can include religion inside and speak. And I'm going to give you uh, an important uh, information about the religion of the Anglo-Saxons. So we are going to speak about society. So they lived in cities, towns, small towns. Uh, mainly uh, the Romans built those towns because the Romans are very known for their architecture. The Anglo-Saxons lived there and of course they improved a lot of towns, etc. So they lived in communities, right? In a society, they relied on agriculture as well, right? Uh, agriculture was very important because industry didn't exist at that time. So agriculture is important. How did they manage to practice agriculture? They kept the same um, system of the Celts and the Romans, but they have initiated something new, which was also something revolutionary. He, or sorry, they um, they managed to um, to attach uh, plowing um, materials. Uh, I'm not so sure if plow is written like this or um, like this. I must check uh, to plow it means to dig to dig uh, or to turn um, to turn the land in order to um, to practice agriculture in order to have crops etc so they managed to uh, attach these things these these um, agricultural materials uh, to oxen right to oxen when I say oxen it is let's say um, cows are mainly domestic animals uh, which are used for farming cows or bulls or etc so they managed to attach those materials in order to plow to dig longer distances so because before the Celts they used to uh, dig heavier soil indeed but it was not very long so the Anglo-Saxons uh, developed the agriculture and they managed to um, practice agriculture in very large distances etc so it was something very good at that time and of course these um, these digging uh, this digging or uh, let's say it led to have uh, long strips to cultivate it was like this and you practice agriculture here, these are called strips, right? Long, thin strips, and each uh, family was given to cultivate these strips. I think uh, from three to four uh, per family. For example, the king grants four strips for each family, and e and some families indeed they had the privilege to have oxen to help them uh, plow in the soil. And of course, these um, these people uh, managed to uh, live in a community, but also it means they helped each other. Some families gave the oxen to other families in order to help them out, because the economy of the Anglo-Saxons depended on that. Now we move to religion. The Anglo-Saxons were Germanic tribes, like I said, and almost all the Germanic tribes were pagans. The word is pagan. All right, pagan means that the belief of or to believe in many gods. For example, you have the Vikings who were pagans as well, uh, which raided uh, or who raided the Anglo-Saxons later on. So the pagan, they were pagans at first, but um, the Pope sent an archbishop to Britain 
at the time which was um, under the control of the Anglo-Saxons in order to spread Christianity. Well, King, uh, King Ova at that time was married to a Christian woman, therefore he accepted the uh, Christ Christianity um, easily, and the Anglo-Saxons became Christian as well. So with that being said, uh, one more information, important information about religion, there was Christianity indeed, but there were two kinds of churches. We had the Celtic Church and the Roman Church. So what is the difference between these two? Well, the Celtic Church used to aim for high-ranking people, and the Roman Church worked with the ordinary people. Although, although their differences, they worked together in peace until when one day they disagreed on Easter eggs um, date and the, uh, the Celtic Church declined. You say the Celtic Church, I know you may ask why the Celts, did they stay in the island, uh, why weren't they killed or something like that. Some of them resisted the Anglo-Saxons, they were pushed to the north, like always, Scotland, Ireland, or to the mountainous area. Some of them accepted the, uh, the Anglo-Saxon authority, and they lived like slaves, almost like slaves. They, um, their language was erased, their beliefs were, were erased, a lot of things uh, were erased of the Celtic um, civilization. That's why, uh, for example, the Celtic religion is still, uh, still a mystery today. So, with that being said, this is the um, this is the 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 religion, right? And um, now we're going to to move to um, the last chapter of the Anglo-Saxons. This is a small uh, summary, guys, because um, the Anglo-Saxon civilization is fast and uh, long to study and very interesting. Uh, now we are going to move how uh, how was the end of the Anglo-Saxons? Well. At the beginning of the end, well, like I said, at the beginning of the end, um, there were other tribes which raided Britain. When I say to raid, well, raid, to raid, uh, it was like uh, using force. So they uh, invade using force. They killed people. They took their riches, their wealth. Um, and they, they, they go back to where they come from, like the Vikings. So the Vikings is a very interesting chapter to study uh, because they have been in, um, in uh, Britain uh, under the name of the Danilo. Uh, they expanded in Britain. There were, there were um, struggles between the Anglo-Saxons and, um, and uh, the Vikings. So, the Vikings raided Britain, they struggled, they fought, um, they fought the Anglo-Saxons, they burnt monasteries, they killed people, they were pioneers, pioneers, right, this way, they were pioneers, it means they were, uh, they used to take the wealth of the others, and they killed them, uh, because they had different beliefs, um, one of the beliefs of the Vikings, uh, they thought that there was a place called Valhalla. Uh, they believed in many gods. They were pagans as well. Um, it is very interesting about uh, to study about uh, the Vikings as well. So they raided, uh, they raided Britain. Uh, they killed a lot of the Anglo-Saxons until they settled somewhere in uh, in the middle between two kingdom of the Anglo-Saxons. Um, then there was uh, a crisis between uh, this kingdom, I think. Um, there was a king who was very smart. He used to pay the Vikings money in order, in order to prevent them from raiding his kingdom. Right, until one day, uh, this king, I think his name is Alfred, King Alfred. Uh, until the day of his death, there was a crisis who should be king. Some people believed that a Viking king should govern them, um, but there was a man called William William of Normandy, um, who, who used to live in France. He was 
Duke of Normandy, um, he claimed the, um, the throne of the British or, let's say, the Anglo-Saxons. Some historians may, um, let's say, disagree because uh, some of them say Alfred was not, uh, was not dead. Uh, they say that William challenged King Alfred and William um, killed him and he took the throne and he vanquished the Vikings afterwards. Some others say that he uh, he invaded Britain, he killed the Vikings, and he took the throne of Britain at that time. But it doesn't matter because it will lead to one specific point, which is William became king, and he was under the, the name of William the Conqueror, or William the First, or William of Normandy. Um, he is the one who initiated the feudal system or feudalism and a lot of things which are very important and also known under under the name of the Norman Conquest. Alright, this is about it for the Anglo-Saxons. Um, if you have any kind of questions, please ask them in the comments or feel free to message me and see you uh, another in another video